All right, welcome to the first Blender tutorial that we have on Scenery, and we're going to focus on procedural content generation because everybody likes procedural work. Now, this scene right here, uh, we're going to look at how we can create a palm based on the picture that you saw inside of the blog article. And what we're going to do is look at a couple things here that kind of fast track the tutorial. For one, we already have a curve that's set up here for a tree. And inside of that, we also have geometry nodes that are kind of already configured uh, that we're going to go in and build. We also have a scene that we will enable after we finish the palm. And we have these palm fronds that are all individually named and labeled. And we also have a trunk material that if I go to the shader, I can kind of click here and see that we have a texture that is supplied inside of here that is the trunk that we will be using for our curve. So now that we've described all this, let's go ahead and jump into the geometry nodes and start to build. So down here, I'm going to add the geometry node editor and holding down control and right clicking, I'm going to slice off that first part. And the first thing that we need to do is like think about the curve. So I'm going to want to draw out a curve, but I'm also going to want to control that curve. So pulling off the geometry here, we're going to type in resample curve. And let's put it to kind of a power of, uh, you know, power of two numbers, so 16. And what I'm also going to want to do is kind of say, OK, I want to create this into a mesh, obviously. So let's do a curve to mesh. And we're presented with a few things here. I'm going to go ahead and actually make this bigger. And we can see that, OK, we have the curve that we're going to draw out. In the case of here, we have this curve that will exist and kind of form basically upward, if you can think of the trunk. But we don't have the profile. And the profile of any trunk is usually a circle. So let's go ahead and pull off of the profile curve here. And we will type in curve circle. And we're just interested in having a simple radius. It's a little big. Let's try and just move that down. Actually, let's set it to 16. And let's keep the radius to maybe 0.5, a little bit smaller. Now, inside of this, we basically want to look at how would we connect this to, say, geometry. And you can see right away that we now have a curve and we have our geometry connected, but we don't really have a way to control it too well. And that's because if we look at the resampling and then the curve to the mesh, we're not really setting the radius at all. So this is going to be something where we want to resample and put something inside of here. So we're going to do a set curve radius. And we're going to go ahead and add that instead to this. And inside of the radius here, we're actually going to do a color ramp. And we're going to start to be able to control this here. Now, strictly speaking, this is a linear ramp. What we want to do is have it a little, be a little bit more smooth. So we're going to set it to a B spline. But we also need to take in a factor because this right here is just kind of general. And we want to actually take in the length of the spline. So we're going to go ahead and type in pulling off of here spline parameter and do factor. And now you can see that we're creating this kind of wonky shape. It looks like a little uh, microphone or a speakerphone that you would have. But if you can think about us kind of drawing this upward, you would then have something that is a little bit more like a palm tree. So now we have uh, quite a few things in play here. Uh, the curve to mesh, we're controlling this. And the last thing that we probably want to do also is maybe set the material. We showed that we already have a material that's created. So let's go ahead and drag that in there. And now we have, say, like a, uh, a nice little shape here going on. But what we want to do is have something that kind of moves upward. So let's look at how we can uh, reorient this real quick. And one thing that we can do is go into tab here on the curve object. And you may have selection enabled where you can just kind of select a point. But what we want to do is we want to come out here and we want to draw a spline or a curve. So I'm going to draw this upward. And you'll see that naturally we have something where 
the shape is kind of this cone or this creature. So it's based on what we're doing, but it seems that it's kind of inverted. However, we can go back into here and we can start to define what that inversion is. So you can see that we can create a different shape. Let's go ahead and add something. Move this down here. This is a little extreme at uh, being totally gray. So let's go ahead and do this. We can shrink this down. And then let's go ahead and add something that maybe tailors this. And then right here, we can kind of increase the, ra the radius or control it however we want. So like before and how I mentioned, you can kind of just delete this. So selecting these, you can press the X and delete those vertices. And now we're kind of controlling just based off the trunk here of the palm fronds. So you can already see that we've created the basic structuring for the trunk. I'm gonna clean these up a little bit, move this over, and I'm gonna actually move the resample curve back because we're gonna use this in multiple places inside of the graph. All right, so now that we have this built, we can start to look at the next part, which is basically the top part in the meristem. And how we build that is we're going to add an icosphere. So to add the icosphere, let's move this up a little bit. We're going to obviously look at how we can resample these curve points. And most importantly, we want to target the points. So let's drag off of here and say we want to do instance on points, which is basically the first one that we have. And we'll probably move this down here, like we had mentioned, because we're going to utilize a couple things. First, what we're going to want to do is target the selection. We mentioned that we want to target the endpoint. So if we pull off of selection here and we type in endpoint, nicely named, we can say that the start size is going to be zero because we don't want it to actually spawn the entire spline uh, length. And then we also just want to have it at the end point. Now, what we can do here on the instance is we can drag off and we can type in icosphere. And this is just a fancy name for a sphere. And then on this side, let's go ahead and add some things and make sure that the selection is set. And the last thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is add a join geometry so we can see it. I wondered why it wasn't connecting, I don't know, yeah, that's why. So now if I connect it with a join geometry, you can see that we have the icosphere in place. It's a, it's a little low resolution, so we can probably just beef that up to maybe three. But now we also need to look at a couple things, one, we want to add the material that we had done before, which is the trunk, so it's kind of the same. And then we also want to, if you look right here, you can see that all the normals are really hard. We want to basically set the normals to be smooth. So uh, shade, smooth geometry. And if we connect to this, you'll see that we now have like this little ball figure, and that's the meristem that we're going to connect the uh, palm fronds to. So that's kind of like the, the midsection and how we set that up. And then the next part that we're going to look at is we're going to look at how we can connect the uh, palm fronds into the meristem. So down here in the instance points, we're going to actually utilize the points coming directly from the icosphere. And we're going to use that to distribute. So let's go ahead and do a distribute points on faces because we're going to take the faces of the icosphere and we're going to go ahead and seed it a little bit. Let's just leave it at 10 for right now for the, the ease of use. And we're going to do another instance on points, except it's going to be a little bit different this time. Um, the instance is actually going to come from a collection. So what we can do here is we can drag in the fronds collection directly. And we can say that we want to separate and reset all of our children and the fronds themselves can go into the instance. 
Now, like before, we have to make sure that we connect up the geometry to see it. But now you can see that we basically have all of these. Uh, it looks like a uh, kind of like a hairstyle a little bit, but we need to be able to kind of change those around or rotate them. And what we can do on that end is we can look at the instance rotation and we're going to pull that off to the rotate Euler. Oops, misspelled that one. And we're going to then take the rotation of the faces because we want to make sure that we calculate those correctly. It seems that they're upside down, so we can go ahead and invert that a little bit. Let's go ahead and change this around. And now we're starting to get somewhere that we want. We can go ahead and pick the instance on this. And most importantly, we want to make sure that we set this to be local and not object based. So now we're basically getting this, uh, this palm tree with the procedural palm fronds placed throughout. Now, there are a couple things here where we can kind of increase the density, say we have more on this. But overall, that kind of completes the most basic form of this. So we can beef up this a little bit so we can see it better. However, if we were to go into the tree like we did before, we would see that we can go in and let's edit this. And if I draw upward, now we're creating palm trees. Let's step back. And now we can go into our scene that's kind of been hidden for a while here. And let's go ahead and draw here a palm tree, a right, palm tree here, a little smaller one. And now we have kind of this beach setting that's all procedurally created inside of Blender. And naturally, if you want to go in and say, move these around, you don't have to always be drawing them. You can move them into position because they're just curve points. And you can definitely even change the curve points around themselves. So if I didn't like this, I can move this up and down and everything procedurally kind of populates. So it's a nice little handy trick. And this is kind of our first step in creating our simple beach scene with our procedural palms. So just to recap and making sure that we cover everything, we did a resample curve and this basically went to the factor of the spline or the index. We took a color ramp to define the, uh, the width, so it was kind of skinny in the middle. We set the curve radius through this, and uh, we took the profile of the curved circle, we set the material, then we came in through the icosphere on it onto the endpoint of the curve. We distributed on those faces of the mesh the palm fronds. We made sure that we rotated them downward locally. And then we took those points and we joined all the geometry to be back to what it was originally. So that kind of wraps up the Blender tutorial on procedural palm fronds. And we can look at how we can possibly create a procedural island next or populate rocks and grass on the bottom of this. But it's uh, a good start. And I hope you enjoyed the uh, tutorial and look for more tutorials uh, on the Scenery channel.